Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my very messy workshop here. I got so many projects on the go. Whew, it's just a lot coming through. Custom builds from scratch for clients, restorations, repairs, sheath repairs. So many different things, you guys, are all geared up. It's fall, it's hunting season, Christmas is approaching. Everyone's all stirred up now. This is the, you know, the exciting time of year for everyone. And I have a real special knife here we're going to restore. Let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look here. This is a German-made beauty. It's pretty old. I'm not sure the year, but the client tells me that it's, uh, it's pretty old. It's been around a long time. But uh, I noticed right off the bat with the sheath, there's remnants of stitching on the back side, but all the stitching on the front side has been pulled through, which means you can do this. So the stitching has been snipped or just corroded, rotted off. So we're going to need to restitch the sheath. Got some corrosion, some rust on all the pin heads. Maybe we'll repin it. Might need to. They look real solid and nice. I bet you we can clean those up and polish them. I think we'll need to replace this little strap. We've got some dry rotting there. I see some little crackling. The snap's a little bit, little bit weak. Not much crispness to it, crispness to it there now. So we'll probably replace that. But original sheath looks like as well, made in Germany. Beautiful, beautiful little sheath. Now the knife itself. Have a look. Looks like this knife had a polished finish probably when it left the factory whether it was it was probably coated probably like parkerized or, or something like that nice shiny finish but that has been eaten through quite a bit and the client tells me that uh i believe it was his grandfather tried to clean up the blade or sharpen it or something on a grinder and we've got some deep hash marks in there look at this beautiful guard isn't that done nice and of course we have that bolster, it's sloppy, I'm betting we can tighten it up, we'll see. But then we have this, in, this is going to be the most difficult part, we have a stag handle here, split, we don't know what's inside the tang, but this was intentionally split it looks like, I don't think it split after, and uh, it was peened on, but notice it's separated quite a bit there, and there's a little bit of movement in there so we've got to disassemble this handle somehow and have a look see what's going on there so i think we'll start there get chucked in the soft jaw vise here nice light pinch just had to custom fabricate this to dimension i almost consider myself a knife and tool maker at this point because i make so many little components look how these are machined you've seen us build uh custom knife from scratch on this channel using this exact design but look how this is done round nut brass see that slotted to accept a tool this pummel comes off nice and easy looks like aluminum be real nice let's see if we can disassemble this handle let's get the delica here see if we can get in between there I'll just make it known that we do not have to save these stag scales. I want to save them as an option. They're so beautiful, but I don't think the client wants them reinstalled, even if we can. But Let's save these spacers if we can. Lovely. Hey, nice! Oh, that was too easy. And then look at our tang there. You can see this was split. This piece of stag was split. And then they carved each side out individually. We've done this before with uh, a bog oak. Our bog oak, ancient bog oak bowie we made. We did this type of design. Very simple, very nice. It's pretty snug. I don't know if we'll be using that again or not at this point. I told the client we'd uh, re-update once we got the handle disassembled to see what we have to work with. It's 
Sweet. Very nice. No problem at all. And so here is what we have now. Here's the base that we'll be working off of. First thing I'll do, I think, is take this to the wire wheel on the bench grinder. We'll wire wheel off any dirt, scale, anything that we can take off. Then we'll assess the blade finish. We'll be able to see it a little better and come up with a game plan from there. Okay, it's time for show and tell. Let's have a look. You can see those score marks, and I see this so often when knives come in for restoration. So often. It's almost, uh, <laughs> you can almost bet on those score marks being there. See again on this side. I'm not too worried about this pitting. Nobody minds that. You can clean up that pitting nice. Throw my glasses off there. That pitting is cleaned up nicer now. When I polish, it just looks like nice character. But those score marks aren't going to work for us. So now you see what we have here looks like mostly one plane, maybe slightly convex. We have a swedge here is another plane, another bevel. We have a fuller. I don't need to touch up here, this flat. I don't need to touch the fuller. I don't need to touch the swedge. What I'm going to try to do is rough convex this out. So we'll probably come up to the underside of this swedge. We'll take up to, so probably this whole bevel here, kind of a saber blend into this surface up here leading up to the switch. I'm about to run to grinder here now. I'm using a slack belt. We'll start with 120. We'll see how it goes. This is even a partially worn 120. We'll see how it goes. Don't want to create any deeper scratches than we have to because they're a lot harder to get out in the, in the later stages. So quick, you see it finished up on the surface grinding belt, went up to 400 grit. And look at that, totally established new grind. Didn't that come out nice? We'll take it to the buffer now and we'll get a pretty nice gleam and finish. You'll still see that slight striation for a mirror polish, a full mirror polish. This will be a much more extensive project, but this will be just beautiful as it is now when we take it to the buffer. There's the finish we have now. I brought you out in this nice evening light. Look at the fall trees there, but isn't that lovely? Look at that. And it takes a while. This is not something that you can easily do on a grinder the first day you pull your grinder out of the box, but with the, the, the hours I've invested in grinding bevels, it's not too difficult to resurface like this and come out with this kind of finish. You just need the right series, nice setup of tools. Got some girls blowing bubbles here. Look at that. We're going to tape this up now, cover it up. There's no edge on this yet. We're going to tape it up so we can protect it throughout the rest of the process and get onto the handle work now. Sure, sure. Just look at this evening here, guys. The flatbed. Look at the water. Like oil. Warm here. It's up 
like 15 degrees Celsius today, which is just crazy, just gorgeous, still crisp, like sweater weather, but we're gonna end the video here. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here, and we're gonna finish it. The, all the rest of the work, that's all the time I have in the shop for today, we'll finish the project in the next video, and it's gonna be real nice. Wait till you see the, the, what we're gonna do for the handle. Exciting. Look at that. Have a good day. We'll see you in the next video. You're you're blowing too hard. You have and you're you're no, lay it down. You're being too rough. You wanna be nice and smooth so it comes out like that. Ow. And then you don't wanna you wanna see that? That's what you wanna do. Hey. <laughs> ah.